Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and I have a pretty controversial opinion today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, obviously AI is a pretty hot button issue. I've made a few videos in the last week talking about how crazy good some of these multi-billion dollar AI projects really are. You know, we used a web browser that I guess people are using now to burn an ungodly amount of resources and now browse the internet for you. You've got Microsoft releasing something that screen records your system the whole time to give you very little in return. Now, ultimately, I'm somebody that believes nuance is very important. You know, I, I definitely can see this whole fuck AI train and you can ride it all the way to the end. But ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, artificial intelligence is not something that's going away. A lot of companies and a lot of AI-centric companies have put in so much money, there is such a massive AI bubble at this point that uh, I think at some point it's going to crash when people realize that maybe it's not worth the juice that is squeezed. You know, the amount of resources spent really aren't leading us to something mind-changing. But again, to say that all artificial intelligence is kind of useless is... Bit of a stretch. Now, this is a technology like many other that depends on you, the user, and how you choose to harness it. So for a lot of people that use artificial intelligence, I think we all can kind of agree that generative AI with videos and images might not be something that has a lot of good down the road, especially when it's done for illegal purposes. Now, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, there is a lot of good case uses for, I think, artificial intelligence. In a lot of cases, machine learning does work in the medical field to help cut down a lot of tedium and bullshit that comes with researching pretty serious things. So people that are doctors, medical professionals can use that to kind of you know, navigate and, uh, and, and do the more important human-centric things. I think for people that program or are just starting to learn how to write code, you know, AI can be a great tool for people who have no coding experience to put a functional program together. Uh, but there's also good uses too, I think, for artificial intelligence for people that, you know, like to play tabletop games like me from time to time. This is a game known as Cyborg, a brilliant, brilliant title. You know, something that I absolutely will sit down and play with, with some friends. And again, you know, to understand having a GM, having somebody using an artificial intelligence to replace that is cool. But you may not feel totally comfortable with burning, you know, the entire world down with your quest for artificial intelligence. But what if you could just run things locally? And that's something that I'm a huge proponent of. I think that, you know, the reason why I don't feel comfortable using things like ChatGPT, uh, using things like Gemini, using things like whatever Facebook related is I don't trust Sam Altman, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Satya Nadella, any of these big... Silicon Valley tech dudes to, uh, you know, take my personal information, really get people to send them images of themselves, their family, basically infest us so far into our personal life that the information they already have on us is then supplemented by user-provided personal information that I don't think any company should fucking have. Now, China has been releasing a lot of open source versions of their AIs. And you might have noticed a video earlier this year where I looked at DeepSeek and it kind of blew the uh, you know AI world a little open, right? You know, locally running an artificial intelligence model that was more efficient and in some cases better for people, uh, you know, at least because they were running their stuff locally. And you might be like, but Muda, it's China. How can you trust it? I trust it because I run this locally on my system without it ever connecting to the internet. Now, in the, in the case, uh, ChatGPT released uh, ChatGPT OSS, which is an open source version of their actual like AIs that you can download and run locally, which is actually going to be what we're going to be doing in today's video, because I feel like a lot of people just don't know that you can run this stuff locally on your system, even if it's a cell phone. A lot of modern systems have AI cores built into their CPUs, and if you're a gamer with an NVIDIA GPU, and I think even AMD stuff, you can run this shit locally. Uh, maybe it's not as good as the big, you know, supermodels in the sky, in the cloud, but at least the stuff runs locally. And in many cases, I think you'll realize that even if it's not as shiny and good as the stuff in the cloud, because you're running it locally, because you're running this technology on your terms, it might be something you could use to your advantage. I'm not somebody that says you should just shun technology away. Look, at the end of the day, the Pandora's box is open. So how can we use this stuff ethically? And how can we actually take back some of the ownership from these big organizations? So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get talking about Docker. Now, for instance, one of the things that I've been playing around with is something known as Seer XNG. Now, 
If you're not knowing anything about home labbing, this is a where people build their own little servers, they build their own little self containers. Now, one of the containers that I use is Seer XNG. And the reason I use Seer XNG is that it's purely self-hosted, no user tracking, has access to hundreds of search engines. And the way that you get this going is you can go to their installation script and provided you have Docker set up, which if you remember that Linux uh, uh, running Windows app on Linux video I made like 10 days ago, I showed you how to set up Docker and Docker Compose in your Linux system. Now, provided you follow that video and you have stuff ready to go, you can basically just copy a command like this where you clone an entire Git repository to your system, change directory into it, and run a script, which again, you should always run scripts you trust. That I'm gonna leave up to you. And once you have Seer XNG installed, you can go to any of your browsers, type in 127.001, and the port default should be 8080, but you can change this in the Docker Compose script to whatever you want. And as soon as you hit enter, you'll be set to a Seer XNG instance. Now here you can go to the preferences tab, so to speak, and in the preferences tab, you can go to engines and you can flick on any search engine that you want. So if you don't want Google, but you want, I don't know, DuckDuckGo, you can flick on whatever you want. Don't just slap all of them on unless you really love uh, <laughs> an inefficient search engine. And at this point, you can just talk about, you know, anything that you want. So I'm going to type in the words user privacy, hit enter. And of course, with a response time of, again, zero to one seconds, you can actually get whatever it is that you want. Now, granted, the search results might seem a little bit of a flashbang to you to start off. And if it's something you notice here, there's no sponsored ads, there's no ads in general. And uh, because of the way Seer XNG works, you can host your own search engine and basically strip away all of the privacy busting shit that comes with standard search engines anyways. And because it's hosted on your system, you are completely in control. No, you don't need to deal with Google or Bing or fucking, you know, DuckDuckGo. You can fuse them together. You can pick and choose what you want and you can tailor things to how you intend it. You probably have never heard of this shit, but at least you do now. But let's talk about the AI bubble in the room, okay? And obviously you can go to chatgpt.com, you can go to Gemini, you can go to any of these services, but if you don't feel comfortable, but you still wanna play with artificial intelligence, boy, have I told you how easy it has gotten, okay? So if you go to a website known as Olama, you can download the Windows client or the Mac client, and these come with GUIs that you can just install the model to and chat with them as you would these big websites. But if you're on Linux, you can copy this one script. Now we're not, we're not just gonna copy this script, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go through the actual uh, next piece of software that I think is absolutely imperative you run on your system if you're a fan of this kind of shit. So, all right, in order to get this stuff really started, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna get Olama. Now you can actually get Olama in its own Docker image, which is kind of how I tend to do these things. So going into their website, it's as simple as copying this command once you've installed the NVIDIA Container Toolkit, which is really dependent on what your Linux system is. So really the best way is to look up, you know, your Linux distribution and how to install the NVIDIA Container Toolkit. But to give you a quick idea of what it looks like, basically the NVIDIA Container Toolkit is how you connect your GPU to the actual, um, you know, uh, Docker containers which again, ladies and gentlemen, might I remind you, is where you're gonna get that big performance gain. If you don't have a GPU that needs anything or an NVIDIA GPU, ignore this step. But since I have an NVIDIA GPU, I think it's fair that I show you guys how this stuff works, okay? So it's a simple matter of installing this onto your system. So again, using a command like this, you can install the NVIDIA Container Toolkit underneath Arch Linux-based systems depending on if the repository has that tool, which in most cases I think it does. Then running this command, NVIDIA CTK runtime configure runtime docker, it'll modify the actual configuration so you can patch docker through, restart your computer or just restart the docker service. And then of course, to test if it works, feed in this command where it pulls in, checks if the GPU is functioning. As long as you can see the NVIDIA SMI, you should be good. Now, the next step is obviously installing Olama in a container. So looking at this command right over here, and again, be careful on what you run on the internet, but again, running this command will allow you to run Olama in your actual Docker instance. Now, once that is done and dusted, it's time to install a model. 
Now the model that we're going to be installing is through a command where again, because it's in a Docker, you want to do Docker exec dash it olama olama again, and you want to pull and this is where you're going to pick which, uh, you know, model that you want. Now, if you go to the models page on, you know, uh, Olama, they have a whole bunch. So, for instance, you can get GPT OSS, which is what we're going to do. But let's say you want to use something like DeepSeek. You can go all the way from parameters like 1.5 to 671. So, you want to pick the parameter model that's more appropriate to your system. 20 billion is pretty much what I think most people who are enthusiasts in this can run. 120 billion, obviously, the higher the parameters you're downloading, the more hardware that you need. So, for DeepSea, you can go all the way to 1.5 billion and or download the full 671 billion parameter model. Now, these are updated pretty sporadically, so again, you can always update these models for local use down the road. Now, you might be like, do you feel comfortable running a Chinese model or the American model? Again, this is a local AI instance, not something that requires you to really put in You're not sending stuff off, you're just running things locally. So, you can be, you can feel safe. Now, if you want something where you can share images like Quen3, where you can, you know, send in an image and have it analyze it, you can do that. But again, we're just going to stick for simplicities and for this guide, GPT OSS. So again, entering this command, you'll download a 15 something gig model. So again, the larger the parameters, the more space you need. So you probably want to have around like 15 to 30 gigs free on your system for this whole sort of project. Now, once Open Web UI is installed, the next thing you want to do is actually get that going. So you can go to the Open Web UI GitHub page, which again, if you go to their website right over here, this is what you're going to be using as an interface to connect into the models that you downloaded. You don't want to just be using the terminal, right? You want things to look clean and nice. So going to Open Web UI, going to their GitHub page, as we see over here, and I don't know why Git slow, but you can go all the way down and in the installation section of this, what you want to do is run Open Web UI with NVIDIA GPU support. So copy this line. Remember, this is a whole set of like case uses. So if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, you can just install the regular system right here. Remember, with just a CPU without any AI acceleration stuff, it's gonna be slow. But if you do have AI acceleration cores, that's going to make this a much more uh, enjoyable experience. So copy this whole thing over and just slap it into your terminal and it will also execute this command. Now, once all of this is done and dusted, you can go to Docker Container LS and you can see that I'm running things like Olama, I'm running Open Web UI. So it's time for me to connect into Open Web UI and see what all the hullabaloo is about. Now, depending on how your system is functioning, you can also feed through this command. If you're coming through server errors, you can feed it this command where a big change called network host is done, where it opens up more of your internal uh, Docker connections so that you can run this. Now, when you go to localhost 8080 or 3000, depending on how you set it up, you'll be greeted with a uh, registration page. Now, you can feed a name, email, and password. And again, if you're wondering, am I sending my information? Something? This is all locally hosted. So you can feed it a bunk email address or your real one. It doesn't matter. But the moment you do that, you'll be fed into the open web UI system. Now, in the top right, where you can see your profile picture, go to administration panel, go to, uh, again, uh, settings, go to connection, and where it says Olama API, click on the little configure gear, and if you need to, change it to localhost 11434, hit that little refresh, and if it says server connection verified, that means going back to the home page, you should be able to see your installed model. So here is GPT OSS 20 billion parameters, and of course, I'm just going to ask it for a fun fact. Now, this moment in time, it will spin up your GPU, all right? You'll, you'll, it's basically loading the model into memory, and eventually it will give you a response. So, for instance, you can ask it options trading, and because the model is loaded in, you can see that it's thinking, and it's actually pretty damn fast for what it's doing. Now, if you don't like the GPT OSS model, you can load in any other model that you need. And if you look carefully into it, you can see that, yes, it does absolutely load into your GPU's memory. So yes, you are absolutely cranking your graphic card up whenever you're running this model.
But again, if you're running the model locally, okay, you're literally just using what you bought for your own actual gain. And that's really where the magic comes into over here. Again, I don't think AI is an evil tool. I just think it depends on how comfortable you are getting rid of that, you know, big company dependence and running this shit locally for yourself. Now again, obviously, if you want to feed this in for internet research, it's also not impossible to do. Going back to the actual like instance over here, if you want to connect it externally, you can actually go back to the administration panel. And inside settings over here, you can go to the web search option and actually allow Open Web UI to do web searches. Now, again, web searches depend on which engine you're using. You can use Seer XNG. You can also have like paid API access to like some of the big search engines and feed it that way. But if you have that Seer XNG instance, you can feed the actual Seer XNG instance and work through that. Now, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, you might be like, what about generative stuff too? Obviously, the downside to this is if you're not a fan of generative stuff, uh, again, you can skip this section, but for people that are wanting to have at least some local stuff for that, there are things like Comfy Cloud, which I'm not going to go through setting up because it's not something that I have an interest in, but it does show you how people download other open source models and use them for illustrative generative purposes as well too. The other thing obviously is, let's say you're somebody, again, like I said, if you're a programmer or somebody that wants to learn programming, local AI is a much more, I think, economical option because utilizing things like uh, GPT OSS or even DeepSeek, the higher billion parameters, there is one code editor that I use on my Mac known as Void. You can also download for Windows or you can just set up an equivalent for Linux. But since you have Olama set up, you can feed your Olama you know, address into the code editor and using the code editor, you can actually use these open source models in agentic ways where you can use it as assists for coding, or you can just talk to these actual LLMs and utilize them to write code. Like for instance, can you write me a simple calculator program in uh, C++ that allows users to input two uh, variables and do uh, either four of these commands? So again, when you got the actual model doing it, it'll provide you the code as well, which again, if you're somebody that wants to learn how to code, you can even feed it uh, the ability for you to learn code from to begin with, right? So for instance, if you ask it, I don't know how to write C++. And again, because it's an open source model too that you're running locally, it'll think quickly and start feeding you the ability to write stuff on your own. Again, these are just some of the many things that you can do with local AI systems. And I wanted to make this video because ultimately I know it's a controversial thing to say, you know, AI has some nuanced uses to it instead of the whole either I have to suck this thing off or fuck AI in every capacity. I'm not somebody that's unrealistic. I think that, you know, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Look, at the end of the day, AI is here to stay. So you might as well learn how to utilize it in a manner that is not disrespectful to you. So again, if you're somebody that wants to utilize AI in a more ethical manner, or you're somebody that you know wants to at least take advantage of this kind of stuff without ultimately dealing into the unethical uses of it, or letting companies get away with the privacy busting nature, this is an option you have, okay? And setting it up ain't that difficult. And if honestly you found this video to be too difficult, there's software like ML Studio, or uh, yeah, the LM Studio that you can download that'll run these things far more easier than what I've shown you. This is just a matter for you to set it up once and have an easy accessible way to utilize ChatGPT or any of these services, but on your own terms. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I am out.